Hello friends welcome to eSavera I am Jayesh Gandhi and today we are going to talk about indirect addressing mode and we will see a programming example to demonstrate the instructions using indirect addressing mode so let us dive in first of all let us understand what is indirect addressing mode in indirect addressing mode the memory address of the content being addressed is placed in some microcontroller register which can be manipulated this last word manipulated is important you can change the value of these registers and hence change the addresses during the execution of the program let us see what it exactly means so here we have a memory where 40414243 they are all addresses 012345 they are all data placed in these addresses and register r0 of 8051 is pointing to the address 40 because it has the content 40 so this register is pointing to this address now if you write down an instruction like this move a comma at r0 move the content of memory location whose address is in r0 to register a so the memory address is in r0 so 40 is the memory address and that data is to be moved in register a so the number 01 will be moved in register a The second important point is that R0 acts as a memory pointer. You can see over here this address acts as a memory pointer. And it can be manipulated like incremented or decremented or you can do some other arithmetic over that. So you can change the value of this particular register and hence you can change the value of this pointer. for example if i increase the value of r0 increment it by 1 then we will get the pointer which will point to the next memory location if you further increase it it will point to the next memory location and so on you can manipulate the value of the pointer to the memory location so using different pointer values you can address different memory locations and hence different data with the same instruction let us go ahead and talk something more about the 8051 for 8051 there are only two registers only r0 and r1 can be used as memory pointers no other r registers can be used as memory pointers so this is an important point related to 8051 let us now talk about an example by which we will try to understand and uh, implement the memory pointers in the 8051 program so first of all the program statement 10 data bytes are given in continuous memory locations starting from memory location 40h write a program to copy this block of data to memory location starting from 54h so we are given 10 bytes in 40h we have to copy them in 54h let us see what it means so block of 10 data bytes is given over here these are the 10 addresses and corresponding to that these are the 10 data bytes and now we can initiate a pointer to this so r0 register will load 40 so that it points to the first data of this block now we want to transfer this whole block of memory to the destination 54 so in 54 i will want to write 01 in 55 i want to write 02 and so on so now for the destination we will initiate a pointer the pointer will be stored in register r1 so one pointer for source the other pointer for destination that explains why there 
there are two pointers in 8051. Let us try to write down a program which will explain uh, how the whole process is done. So first of all, we will try to uh, start the program and write something and develop an algorithm and hence a flow diagram which will execute the job which we want to do. So the first step is that initialize the starting point, starting address of the source data. That means put 40 in one pointer. Then initialize the starting address of destination data. So the destination pointer is initialized. Then this is important, initialize the number of bytes to be transferred. So in sum R register we will put down the value 10 because we have got 10 data bytes to be transferred. Then we will transfer the source data to the accumulator. So the first source data is transferred to the accumulator. Then the accumulator is transferred to the destination address. So the first data will go to the destination address. After that we will manipulate the addresses, increment the source address, increment the destination address and then we will decrease the byte counter. So we have put 10 in this byte counter, we will decrease it and then we will check it whether it is 0 or not. So if it is not 0, we will go back to the next data transfer. If it is 0, then we will stop the program. So that is the whole logic of the program. You can see that each step written over here will translate in, into 8051 instruction. So let us see how it translates. The first is the origin address, the starting point of our program. Then the first instruction move R0 comma starting source address. So we will we'll put down a number which is the pointer to the starting address of the source data. Then the starting address of the destination data in R1. So R0 is the first pointer, R1 is the second pointer. In R3 we will write down the number of bytes which we want to transfer. So that will be 10. Then we will move the first byte into the A register. Then we will move the A register into the destination. Then we will manipulate the pointers. So increase R0, increase R1 decrease the byte counter and jump if not zero. So here is a combined instruction decrement jump if not zero R3. So the value of R3 is decremented and if it is not zero then a jump is executed to this loop. You can see this loop is a label which will translate into an address when the assembler will assemble the code. The label in the instruction will be written as the label itself LOOP and there is no colon over here while the label which you put in the label column will have a colon indicating that this is the label address. So this syntax you have to remember loop over here has got no column colon while loop over here has got a colon and these two are combined into one instruction and then when the whole loop is over then the data is transferred to the destination and therefore the program ends. So that is how the program works and now we would like to go to the Edsim simulator to execute the program. So I will just switch on the simulator. So this is our EdSim 8051 simulator and in this simulator uh, we can execute the 8051 programs. So here you can see that this is the source block of data from 40 to 49 where you have got 2, 3, 5, 5, 3C and so on all these values. This is your source block which is initialized and now we will initialize the destination block we will copy this source block into the destination block so let us assemble this program the first instruction will put 40 in register r0 
the next instruction will put 54 in register r0 so 40 has gone to r0 54 has gone to r1 40 is the source starting address 54 is the destination starting address and both the pointers memory pointers are initialized now we will initialize the register r3 to 0a because we want to transfer 10 bytes from source to destination whatever number you put over here that many bytes will be transferred from source to destination so if you put 5 then 5 bytes will be transferred if you put a then 10 bytes will be transferred and so on now you bring the source data into a register so first source data 23 will go into a register so let us see that it has come into a register 23 has come into a register now this value will go into the destination and therefore it goes into 54 so that is over here so first data is transferred from 40 to 54 now we manipulate the pointers increment r0 and increment r1 so this becomes 41 and this becomes 55 then we will decrement the value of r3 and jump if not 0 to loop this address so now the value of r3 will be decremented and the program counter will come to 0006 so let us execute that so the value of r3 is decremented from a it has become 9 and the program counter has become 0006 so you are again back over here that is why it is called loop and now we step and we transfer the second byte into a register and put the second byte into the destination memory block so 55 has gone to the this address and then manipulate the pointers decrement the counter jump if not zero then the third byte is moved manipulate the pointers and decrement the counter in this way we can go on till we are moving the data to the destination and now we have the a9 that is the a ninth byte b which is transferred to the destination 5c and now we will increment this to so increment r0 increment r1 so we are at the last address of the block we will decrement the r3 and jump if not 0 so from 2 it will become 1 and we will jump if not 0 so you come back over here now we are transferring the last byte so ac will go into a register and the a register is copied in the destination so that brings the last byte into the destination again we increment the counters and then decrement r3 jump if not zero now from one if i decrement the value of r3 then it will become zero and therefore it will not execute this jump and it will go to the end of the program so now i just don't execute the jump i don't go back over here and the program ends and we can see that the source is copied into the destination so it is a simple 8 to 9 instructions program but it explains how the data is copied from one place to another place so we can change the destination address to see that how the whole thing is copied to some new address and then i assemble it so it is assembled so now your data will come over here in this 10 locations and we will see it in run mode so that you can see one by one the data is coming into the destination address the first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth and tenth and that ends the program so now we can pause and that is how 
the data is transferred from the source block to the destination block. Such programs would be executing in the background in the computer when you copy a file from one location to another location in your computer. That brings us to the end of this tutorial. Hope you have enjoyed it. Please like our tutorials, press the bell icon to get the notifications and subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.